All right, everyone, thanks for joining me. I want to talk about something really special from the Bible, specifically from Revelation 5, verse 1 to 7. This part of the Bible is packed with imagery and meaning, so let's break it down in a way that's easy to understand. So picture this scene. John, one of Jesus' disciples, has this amazing vision. He's in heaven and he sees God sitting on a throne. In God's right hand, there's a scroll with writing on both sides, sealed with seven seals. Now, back in those times, a scroll like this was super important. It could contain a will, a decree, or something significant that needs to be revealed. But this scroll is sealed tight and no one can open it. John's looking around and there's this angel with a loud voice asking, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? And here's the thing, no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. Imagine that, all these powerful beings, and not one is found worthy. John starts crying because it seems like this incredible message from God will stay hidden. But then, one of the elders, these are wise, respected beings around God's throne, says to John, don't weep. See, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He can open the scroll and its seven seals. Now, this is huge. The line of the tribe of Judah refers to Jesus. In the Old Testament, Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel, and it's prophesied that a ruler will come from this tribe. The root of David means Jesus comes from the family line of King David, which fulfills another prophecy. John turns to look and sees a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne. This lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. This lamb is Jesus. Even though he looks like he's been killed, He's alive and standing strong. Now why a lamb? Why not a fierce lion or something powerful? This image of the lamb is all about Jesus' sacrifice. He was crucified. That's what it means when it says, he looks like he was slain, but through his death and resurrection, he defeated sin and death. The seven horns represent perfect power and the seven eyes symbolize perfect knowledge and presence. Jesus is all powerful and all knowing. So what happens next? The lamb takes the scroll from God's right hand. This act alone shows that Jesus is worthy and has the authority. When he takes the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fall down before the lamb. Each one has a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. They sing a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. This song tells us why Jesus is worthy. It's because of his sacrifice. He died for us and redeemed us with his blood. He brought us into God's family, making us a kingdom and priests. This means we all have a special role and purpose in God's plan. Then John sees and hears the voices of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircle the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they say, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. This massive choir of angels is praising Jesus, recognizing all the honor and power he deserves. But it doesn't stop there. Every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them joins in singing to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever think about that every part of creation is praising jesus it shows just how significant his sacrifice is and how he is central to everything so what's the takeaway for us first it's a reminder of jesus's immense love and sacrifice he gave everything for us. His death and resurrection are at the core of our faith. Without him, we wouldn't have access to God or the promise of eternal life. This passage encourages us to recognize and worship Jesus for who he is, the worthy lamb. Second, it shows us that Jesus has ultimate authority. In our lives, we can trust him with everything. He has the power to open the scroll, which means he has control over history and our future. No matter what we face, Jesus is in charge and he's working everything out according to God's plan. Also, it reminds us that we're part of a bigger story. 
as believers, we're included in God's kingdom. We're made to be priests, which means we're here to serve and honor God in everything we do. Our lives have purpose and meaning because of what Jesus did. So next time you think about Jesus, remember Revelation 5, verse 1 to 7. Picture the scroll, the lamb, and the incredible worship happening in heaven. Let it fill you with hope and gratitude, knowing that the lamb who was slain is worthy of all our praise. Glad you're still with me. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss future updates. Let's keep going with this amazing scene in Revelation. We just talked about how Jesus, the Lamb, is the only one worthy to open the scroll. Now let's dive a bit deeper into what this means for us in our everyday lives. First off, remember how everyone in heaven is praising Jesus? That tells us something important. Worship is a big deal. It's not just something we do on Sundays at church. Worship is about recognizing who Jesus is and what he's done every single day. It's about living our lives in a way that honors him. When we pray, sing, or even when we're just thankful, that's worship. It can be as simple as saying, thank you, Jesus, or showing love to others because he loves us. Next, let's talk about the scroll. It symbolizes God's plan and purpose for the world and for us individually. Sometimes life feels like a mystery, right? We don't always know what's coming next. But here's the good news. Jesus knows. He's got the scroll and he's in control. When things get tough or when we're confused about our future, we can trust that Jesus has a plan. We might not see the whole picture, but he does. And that's comforting. Another thing to remember is our identity. The passage says Jesus made us a kingdom and priests. That means we're part of his royal family and we have a special role. We're here to serve God and each other. Think about what priests do. They connect people to God. That's our job too. We're meant to show God's love to others, help them understand who Jesus is, and pray for them. Also, consider the immense power and authority given to Jesus. He has power over everything. Power, wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. That's a lot, right? Knowing this can help us in our daily struggles. When we face challenges, we can rely on His power and wisdom. We don't have to do it alone. We can ask Jesus for help and trust that he's more than capable to guide us through. And think about the diversity in the passage. Jesus died for people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. This means the gospel is for everyone. It breaks down all barriers, race, culture, language. In our own lives, we should embrace this diversity. We should love and respect people from all backgrounds, just like Jesus does. The church is meant to be a beautiful mix of different people, united by our faith in Jesus. Finally, let's talk about the ultimate worship scene at the end. All of creation praises Jesus, imagine that. Every creature, every being, everywhere, praising Him together. This gives us a glimpse of our future hope. One day we'll be part of that incredible worship in heaven. No more pain, no more suffering, just pure joy in the presence of Jesus. So in our day-to-day -day lives, let's try to keep this vision in mind. When we're struggling, remember Jesus holds the scroll. When we're feeling insignificant, remember we're part of his kingdom and have a purpose. When we see division and hate, remember Jesus died for all people. And when we worship, let's give it our all, knowing that one day we'll join the ultimate choir in heaven. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope this gives you some encouragement and a clearer picture of why Jesus, the lamb who was slain, is so worthy of our worship and trust. Take care and let's keep living for him.